buttons guys here we go so this is the last best of three that we will be covering for the IEM cologne qualifiers for the European edition guys I was Rifkin I've been casting today with zombie god but I hope you've been enjoying it so far I don't want to talk about this being the last game King could certainly bring this back but that last game was certainly well handled by our players spawning in the top left leading the series 1-0 it is Stardust And the bright as the red zerg, it is my insanity's cane. Alright, so Frost is another pretty large map. It's not quite the same dynamics that heavy rain persists or permits with like a lot of the engagement areas, but this is a game where I think I think Kane's gotta realize, like, alright, Stardust knows how to deal with swarm hosts. I didn't come out quick enough or early enough with them. If he really wants a chance to go to the finals here, he's gonna have to change something up. Swarm host might try and buy him a victory if he can catch Stardust off guard. But I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. And I do want to quickly bring up the fact that I know there's a lot of people joke around Stardust, you know, cheesy all-ins, blah, blah, blah. But do take a look at last game. He obviously could play a macro game. Um, you know, that last map was just really good for Swarmhost as well. Like, this isn't a bad map, but, you know, hearing a lot of complaints about Heavy Rain for that. So, it's definitely it could be a map where Kane changes things up and actually goes for, you know... Maybe that Hydra attack into Mita's like he did against the last pro player we saw him up against. You know, it would be absolutely absurd and I think a, a risk too great to take. But Nidus Roaches would be really cool. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. We don't really see that that often. It's it's a strategy that's more meant to catch someone off guard. And I don't know if it would catch Stardust off guard, but... Um, Kane is, I don't know, like I said, he's a player, like, this is one of the things I really admire about Kane, guys, right? Like, you can have your different point, opinions about players, and I'm not at all accept, asking you to accept mine, but the thing I like about Kane is he's always looking to improve, and he's not going to be going for, like, a quick 10, like, obviously he didn't, this is why I'm bringing up the point, he didn't go for, like, a quick 10, he didn't try and cheese out a game for a quick victory to bring him back. Like, for him, I imagine a large part of today is, like, not only trying to compete and trying to qualify, but also getting some of the best practice he's going to get. I mean, like, even in a weekly cup, the stakes aren't nearly as high as trying to play an IEM. So, players aren't nearly trying their hardest or damnedest like they would be today, for example. But, open sure. up with a pretty greedy build here. Yep. Quick third hatchery did come down. And, uh, it's a little risky simply because Frost, you know, it's that weird thing where it's the map that everyone thinks that you're going to do something greedy, so they try and do something that'll punish it. In this case, Stardust not really doing anything to... Whoa, wait a minute. That's a one base Stargate. Was yeah. he the one that did that last time? I feel like he is. I remember seeing a Protoss do this before and it must have been Stardust. I'm trying to remember, but I don't recall. It was like on Alter Zeme. That's what I remember. It was on Zeme, and then he followed it up with, like, an attack that... I don't think it actually worked, though, is the end result. I think it... No, actually, it was Arthur. That's who it was. Okay. I was gonna say, if it's so, one base, like, Stardust does cheese, but he usually does it off of two bases, right? Like, uh, Overseer from Kane will see the Stargate complete. Or not Overseer, but Overlord. First Blood. Bloody Carcass left behind. That was the problem with Arthur, too. Like, it was scouted, it was deflected, and then it put him up in a bad spot because his, like, follow-up attack also got deflected. So, not too sure what Stardust expects from this. It is going to be Phoenix, actually. I thought it was going to be an Oracle. Of course, if it's scouted, he might have changed on the on the you know, spot. I, I do like the Oracle opener. I mean, it's, it's kind of like going Banshees versus Queens. You're limited on what you can do, but you can always take them down really quick. And honestly, sometimes picking off a Queen is... Better than picking off a couple drones because you really hamper their production, their creep spread, but most importantly, their larva injects. Yeah. Do have spore crawlers going up though? Yeah, just at the main for now, but probably going up later. Not really too afraid of the queen, you know, at each base. Not for a while, anyways. Some lings going across the map, gonna try and do something, but there is a wall up with the stalker, so pretty much nothing gonna happen there. You know, one thing too is, um,. When you see Arianus, oh my god, oh. how is hey. that not a wall up? What? Alright, Lings get through, they may even kill the stalker, they should be able to kill the stalker, instead he goes to chase the drone instead. Uh, Mother's Report is going to be brought back home, not going to get that stalker surround that Kane's desperately trying to get, but... What the heck at that wall off, like... Metabolic boost kicks in quite nicely, but again, not getting too much done. He saved the stalker, even with boost that is the end right there. Redonkulous. I'm gonna get a couple probe kills though, so not entirely a wasted effort. 
Well, it should have been. Like, you shouldn't have gotten in. Yeah, Look exactly. Look at that. I, it's, I, we could... Butter. <laughs> that's... that's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the Zerglings must have been coated in butter is my only excuse here. <laughs> um, of course, you know, sometimes when the units are off by, like, one pixel, it allows the Zerglings to try and, like, push them away if they're not in the proper hold position, but instead just on, like, a stop or something. But, uh, so one thing I was going to talk about before is, like, when you go Phoenixes like this, one great thing you can do is you can flood, flood, flood Lings, because your opponent's not going to have enough Graviton Beam Energy to pick up every single one. They're not going to be able to shut you down. So if you're not going to go for those quicker Hydralis, sometimes a lot of Lings across the map can be really effective. And actually, Stardust doesn't have many, if any, sentries, so... Kane could flood into this wall and tear it down. He doesn't have enough links to do there, right? It's not the all-in that uh, we could have seen with a, you know, a lot, a lot of links. Now with a cannon, it should be fine. Just two stalkers, not so much, but the cannon definitely. Uh, Phoenix is going to try and do some more harassment. Uh, picking up a few drones here and there. So far, he's killed four workers, kind of, I guess, getting revenge. Yeah, well, I mean, off of this early third base, Kane did have a big worker lead, and he's still maintaining it despite the fact he's been taking some losses here and there. Um, well, the layer being delayed is kind of sucks, because it's not like he could make additional queens or really hydralis early or anything like that to deal with this. I mean, you could try pumping out queens, but even then, uh, phoenixes are just so irritating to deal with, right? Yeah. Ooh, getting a little pot shots here and there. I really like that he's able to do this. You know, you always want to go for the gas. That's also just usually what's available to you, you know, out of the range of the spore crawler. Kane really getting a lot of drones right now. as He's losing quite a few as well. Probably want to go up to around 65. Got a fast robotics bay down for Stardust. So once I can go into the Colossus. That is kind of scary to consider, though. Because he has to make up for these drone losses, you know, that's a lot of army value that's... Not gone, but never made in the first place. He's gonna try and slam into the door once again. There are sentries this time, so four seals can go down. Well, it's, a, it's a full wall off now. Like, it's so funny to see this, though. Like, you only ever see this usually very late in the game, or when a Protoss player is gonna do an all in. That's when they do the full wall offs. And right now, Star's just a little paranoid, and the, you know, he's got to break out of it eventually. Well, the Spire is going to come up here out of Kane, so not at all afraid to go against corrupt or go for Corruptors, as he knows there'll probably be Colossus as the follow-up. You know, you do sometimes see players skip this and not even bother the Spire, but in fact go for like quick Vipers. I kind of, I'm personally more in favor of seeing that happen, but with the with the Phoenix Count roaming around, I think I understand his choice to go for the Corruptors instead. It might be for a Mutilus Twitch, actually. Uh, just because he hasn't been making many uh, Roaches and absolutely no Hydras. If this was like... Any other Zerg player, I would concur without a doubt. I mean, it could possibly be for me this, but Kane is not the guy to do that. Like, I don't know. I don't see him being this is well, go-to. He did. That's what he did on Frost in the last series. <laughs> oh, was that him? Just yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe then. Okay, I don't know. It's. <laughs> <laughs> We're I've seen, to find I've out seen him play a lot of games, and he does use Mutalus, but I've never seen him do like that swap back. I mean, Mutalus Corruptor is really strong, and he's actually one of the few players who does like double Spire to make it work. But I don't know if um, if that's what he's going to go for in this situation. And it's going to be the Corruptors, okay? So the thing is, like, uh, with so many lings available, of course, right now, what his biggest fear is that there's going to be a ton of Colossus behind this, and well, that is in fact the case. It clears out the Colossus lings, even without many upgrades, are, are still going to be very frustrating to deal with for what is primarily stalkers at a very low century count. True. Proper's also gonna have to deal with these phoenixes, which would be nice to get them off the board God, if they get caught. Twenty-three workers with them so far too, like just absolutely oh, abusive. Really? Wow, that is that is quite a that's quite a bit. <laughs> like I realized he had done some, but I finally hit control R, and I'm like, wow, that wasn't thirteen, that was like twenty-three. Yeah. I do like that Kane has spread some zerglings around the map though, so he knows that Stardust isn't taking any sort of hidden or ninja bases. We, of course, has to was trying to do that earlier today, and it worked out quite nicely. Yep. Blink also on the way for Stardust. No third yet. I mean, it's 13 minutes. He's got a pretty nice army. You can definitely take a third. Oh, there it goes. Oh, cast curse. Uh, so. Was it? It's really a curse, though, if you're helping them take a third? I mean. <laughs> I. It's a curse on me, I guess. Like. Well, that's actually going to be a curse on uh, Stardust. He's going to have to cancel this for sure. This is way too many links to deal with. Yeah, he's going to cancel on everything. He's really afraid of this army. Wow, he's like really afraid. He went back into his natural. He's like, no, thank you. Well, that's the thing. There's so many links to flood around. They don't have a lot of upgrades. They're not that dangerous. But if the Colossus go down, there's nothing to stop this. And that brute force factor comes in where just numbers can sometimes overwhelm a Protoss player. There are so many links, though, that I feel like this army is dramatically, like, 
not as powerful. It's really not. Not against Colossus. But the second they're taken out of the equation, that changes. Optrix is going to get a couple Overlord kills here, too. They're not quite sitting on top of the Spore Crawlers. Corruptors are trying to respond, but Corruptors don't exactly kill Phoenixes quickly. A lot of them are really low, though, so they might be able to get a couple snipes off. Stardust has got to do something. Like, get that third up. Finally moves out of his base. You know, if it gets denied again, I wouldn't be surprised if Stardust goes ahead and just tries and counterattack. We finally have Hydralisk on the way, too. I was a little bit shocked that these uh, did come out, because typically you yeah. go with them earlier. But he has invested in range upgrades, so these will pay off really nicely. The Corruptors are yeah, okay, but honestly, I'd really, really like to see that Hive tech eventually for some Vipers. Yeah, me too. I mean, Roach Hydra uh, Corruptor will get you so far in the mid game, but for the late game, you really gotta transition. Looks to cancel the Nexus again, and it looks like he will, in fact, get it. Whoa. Yeah, it's gotta cancel it. Yeah, nice. You know, the longer he shuts him off this base too, Stardust has got a pretty bank, pretty decent bank going, but he's not exactly maxed yet. And the biggest hamper on him right now is those not having geysers five and six. Yeah. A lot more drones are going down again. He's he's getting a lot of use out of these phoenixes. I mean, imagine workers. this game without the the worker kills. Thirty workers, yeah. This is Stardust using phoenixes with great control. Uh, but yeah, so I really like. I mean, okay, so Blinding Cloud's kind of not utilized that much, guys. It's whatever really against Blink Stalkers. They just move out of it instantly. But really love having the option to do abducts. It, it's so strong. And it catches people off guard. I mean. Oh. Oh. Trying to force an engagement. We'll get the Mothership Core. Unfortunately, most of these rushes are just going to walk away somewhat unscathed. Turns around to take the fight. The Hydras are here. But this is still so many Colossus. He's got to be careful it doesn't give these away. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really, really careful. Stardust might have to give us up again. Oh, it's going to be terrible. And that's when that's the, the point where I'm like, maybe he just counterattacks and tries to win. Oh, no, no, build it right in front of the army. What the? Well, we'll slip up a corruptor here, too. Big blink forward. Really aggressive blink forward, actually. Uh, Phoenix is still picking units off here. I mean, even if it's just overlords, they're still killing things, which is insane. Uh, looks like he will knock this down one more time. This is about the third cancel on this Nexus. Stardust is not, uh, can't be too happy about this. Queen does die over here at the third. Man, these phoenixes, zombie group, these phoenixes. Seriously, they're super good phoenixes. None of them have gone down. That's the amazing thing. I think all of them yep, are the originals six. from the one base. Okay, well, he's got 35 workers and a couple of queens on top of this, too. In fact, uh, oh, sorry, just one queen so far. Kane's army is really scary. Um, as far as the head on engagement oh. goes, there's no Wait, force. Wait, you lost six phoenixes? Back. What the? So we lost six phoenixes and then rebuilt six phoenixes and I didn't even what? notice. No, he hasn't lost any phoenixes. What are you talking about? Oh, look at the units lost right now. Yeah, nine probes, one mothership core. That is, oh my god, I'm, I think my, I think <laughs> it says units lost, but it has the units that he has. Okay, so maybe that's bugged, I don't know. Cause yeah, yeah like he, that's, that's completely bugged. <laughs> he 100% hasn't lost any phoenixes yet. Okay. Oh my god, still picking up probes here. <laughs> This is so abusive. And for Kane, this is really not a lot he can do. I mean, at this point, like maybe 15 workers ago, he's finally getting the second spore crawler down. But I'm kind of like, why didn't you get this earlier? I mean, everyone knows one spore crawler deters phoenixes. It never shuts them down. Two is what you really do to lock it in place with a queen. But, uh, you know, this is this is 40, sorry, 40 drones deep. These That second spore crawler at each base would have been worthwhile. Well, Stardust is somehow going to get that third up. I don't know how. He also has both tech and a very scary Ooh. army. Ooh. And Kane took a sweet time getting up to Hive. Yeah, that's an understatement. It's, a, I mean, for somebody who's going to Road Challenge, you would have expected it to come out much sooner. Beautiful storms go down on top of the Hydralist. Oh my god, he's going to lose all of his Hydralist. The Corruptors are trying oh. to take the fight. He lost so much in that initial engagement. The Blink Stalkers will give chase. That might have just cost Kane the game. That was so much loss. He's remaxing on Roaches, but Roaches won't keep him in this. Not against the Colossus. Not against this many Blink Stalkers. The Hydralis were his DPS, and he just lost like 90% of them. He's remaxing with Roaches too, which is just not exactly. It's no good. I'm not gonna do it. I can't believe that Kane loses this game in the blink of an eye. Those storms were just way too powerful for him to deal with. All the corruptors have been picked off at this point. No way to deal with these Colossus. And again, no abducts available. Good game is going to be called. And fortunately, Stardust will move on. Unfortunately, Kane will be knocked out. Really sad to see that happen. But congratulations to Mind Sanity Stardust, guys.